Hello everyone, today's video is all about the taxation of foreign dividends. So owning shares in American companies, particularly becoming more and more popular for UK residents. It used to be for many, many years that the vast majority of investment stocks and shares owned by UK citizens were in UK uh, shares on the stock market, predominantly just in the UK. Now, there are so many different stocks, stock markets around the world, um, but most US, uh, most UK individuals only invested in the UK stock market. That has slightly changed the last few years. People are owning more uh, US stocks, particularly the tech stocks, the FANG stocks, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, uh, Tesla, obviously very popular. So this video, we'll just talk about the taxation of uh, particularly the income stream from those stocks, i.e. the dividends. So dividend on foreign shares. Now you can hold foreign shares uh, in your ISA or your SIP, your pension fund. Um, HMRC say as long as you, um, you hold them in these SIP or ISAs, as long as they are um, what HMRC call a recognised exchange. So recognized overseas stock market and the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ is on HMRC's approved list, if you will, of recognized exchanges. So not a problem. There, no doubt there will be some stock markets overseas uh, which aren't on HMRC's list and therefore you cannot hold shares in your ISA or SIP. You could, of course, just hold them um, in a regular portfolio without any tax advantageous wrappers. Um, but, uh, you know, if you are wanting to access foreign shares, um, you're pretty safe with the states. For other countries, do check HMRC's list. Right. So let's assume you've got a load of shares in Tesla in your um You've got in, in your SIP or your ISA, or you could have them held just individually. So, what happens on uh, the paperwork and the dividends? Now, the USA will typically operate what's known as withholding tax. So, they will pay out the dividend, but the USA tax authorities, the IRS, will withhold 30%. So, they will insist that the paying company withhold. 30% and that gets paid to the United States tax authorities. So let's say you got a thousand pound dividend on your Tesla uh, shares, then the default position is that 300 pounds of that, or the US equivalent in dollars, will be paid over to the IRS and you would receive uh, 700 pounds, 70% of that dividend. Now, thankfully, there is a double tax treaty between the UK and the US and that double tax treaty limits, restricts the amount of withholding tax that the American tax authorities can impose on dividends paid um, to UK residents. And the treaty says that that withholding tax is limited to 15%, i.e. half of the normal 30%. So, in order to access this 15% uh, favourable withholding tax, so half of what the normal withholding tax would be, you have to complete a form if you are a UK investor holding these US shares. And this form is called a W8BEN, B-E-N, W8BEN. Now, you have to fill it in to get the 15% uh, withholding tax, so you'll only so, so you'll get eighty five percent of the dividend paid out instead of seventy percent. Now, in terms of how do you do that, most of the UK exchanges that you will typically hold these overseas shares in, like AJ Bell and Hargreaves Lansdowne, will notify you and say, "Look, we've seen that you own these overseas these USA stocks. Please complete this form. You do it online um, to enable you to uh, to get." The reduced withholding tax. Or often they might not do it online, they might send out in the post. I've seen that in the past. Um, but things are getting more automated now. But the point is, you've got to fill out this form and then you only suffer 15% withholding tax. Now, in terms of um, that 15%, though, 
applies only to those uh, shares that you hold in a non-tax advantageous wrapper um, or an ISA. For SIPs, you don't even have to uh, suffer the 15% withholding tax, never mind 30%. So in the, the US, in the States, the IRS recognizes a UK SIP as being a qualifying pension. So thankfully, um, if you have your Tesla shares in your UK pension fund, a SIP, then actually uh, you don't even you don't even um, suffer any withholding tax on these dividends. So you get the full thousand uh, pounds in this example. The full hundred percent of the dividend hits your pension fund, and the US taxman doesn't withhold anything, which is great. But that's not the same for ISAs and for shares held outside of an ISA or a SIP, because the USA do not recognize UK ISAs as being tax advantageous in the same way as we do. For all intents and purposes, the US tax authorities consider the ISA just to be like a regular holding of a, of a, um, of a share. If you held them um, without being in an ISA, that's how the UK, uh, that's how the US taxman uh, treats them, even though it's tax advantageous from a UK tax perspective. Remember, we've got to deal with US tax here. So you've got your Tesla shares in a ISA, you will suffer some withholding tax. And if you fill out the WA Ben, the withholding tax is only 15%. Likewise, if you hold them just in a portfolio that's not in an ISA, it's not in a SIP. Again, you fill out the form, you will only suffer 15% withholding tax. Now, then we come on to the whole thing about double tax relief. Now, a lot of people will think at this stage, right, okay, so I've paid 15% over to the US taxman. Surely there's no more tax obligations in the UK. Well, that's wrong. That is wrong because as a UK resident, you are subject to income tax on your dividend income sourced from right around the world. It doesn't matter where it comes from. You are sub potentially subject to UK tax on that dividend. We might say, well, hang on a minute, that's not fair because you've already suffered 15% going to the US taxman. And this is where, again, the double tax treaties kick in. So the first clause in the double tax treaty relevant to this discussion is that withholding tax reduced from 30 to 15 but then another clause in the double tax treaty that says, yes, the UK um, may have taxing rights, but you shouldn't suffer double tax. So in other words, what happens is, as a UK resident, you are subject to tax on the dividend received on your Tesla shares. But the UK tax authority gives you credit for any overseas tax suffered in the US. So in this example, let's say... You are a basic rate taxpayer in the UK and you get that thousand pounds worth of Tesla dividend. And let's say it's the only dividend income you've got in the year. Now, the dividend tax rates in the UK are zero percent for the first two thousand pound of dividend and then seven and a half percent for your income in the basic rate band. So in that scenario, UK tax zero, like I said, you would normally get a credit for the American tax suffered, which is 15%. So that's £150. However, the American tax will only reduce the amount due in the UK. It doesn't trip it over into a refund. So even though the UK tax is nil, you are still stuck with having to pay the £150 in the US. You can't say to the UK tax man, please refund me uh, the tax that I've paid in America, that doesn't work. So you have suffered a dividend tax of £150 on a £1,000 dividend. Had that stock, had that share been in BP or you know um, any other UK-based company, you'd have paid zero because of the UK um, tax rates on dividends. So you are actually suffering tax, albeit at 15% in this scenario, because of the interaction between the, the tax reliefs and the fact that the rate is higher in the States than it is in the UK. You don't get a refund 
from uh, the UK if the UK rate is lower than the US. So let's take an example now, kind of the opposite, where the UK rate is higher than the US. So assuming you are a higher rate taxpayer, if you're a higher rate taxpayer, you take dividend income, and let's assume you've exhausted the £2,000 nil rate ban for dividends, and you pay tax on dividends at 33%. So on your UK tax return, you would um, work out 33% of the £1,000 Tesla dividend, which is £330. But then the UK tax man gives you the credit for the £150 paid over to the IRS in America. So you have to then stump up the additional 18% to the UK tax authorities. So again... The, the comparison to if it was a BP share, you're still paying £330 uh, on that. Because if you're a high rate taxpayer, it's just that you're paying all the £330 to the UK tax man. But in this instance, you're paying 180 to the UK tax man and 150 to the American tax man. So you're no worse off. It's just you're paying two different tax authorities instead of one. But in that first example where the uh, US rate is higher, and ours was nil, then you suffer that. Um, you can't get a refund. So that is just um, how the the interaction of the double tax relief works on dividends. So like I said, um, it is important though to get the, the paperwork done. And it's normally every year, every few years you have to do this. Um, actually, it's not normally every year. It's normally every few years that you have to fill out a W-8 Ben from personal experience. Um, but like I said, if you've, got your, if you've got your American shares held in a SIP, then it shouldn't be a problem. You don't even, you don't even suffer any tax because, of course, a SIP is recognized as a pension in the same way in America as it is here. It's the ISA, which the Americans don't recognize uh, in the same way we do. And so you will get that uh, withholding tax. Um, but of course, in the UK, if it isn't an ISA, there is no tax at all. Even if you're a higher rate taxpayer, dividends are tax-free in, in UK ISAs. So when we're looking at the double tax um, relief, if you have your shares in a UK ISA, no UK tax to pay, but you will still suffer the 15% American tax, which you can't claw back. The, the whole point about having to pay the additional 18% in the UK, if you're a high rate taxpayer, is if you own these shares outside of a tax advantageous wrapper. So just holding them in a, in, a, in a normal share account, not in an ISA or in a SIP. So a little bit complicated, a little bit to think about. It's not straightforward um, receiving dividends from, from overseas um, countries, from overseas firms, but you know, if you get the uh, the paperwork right, or depending on the wrapper that you hold it in, then the 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 tax leakage, as it were, should be minimised. So, just uh, an overview there on the tax implications of owning foreign shares, and in particular shares in the US. If you like this video, please do subscribe right there, and I will see you soon.